Hey friends, how are you? How's it going? Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Welcome to the sixth episode of IELTS Video Podcast. I'm really excited that we are about to start this uh, episode. I hope you've enjoyed the previous episodes. And without further ado, let's welcome my dear friend Mehdi. Mehdi, don't you want to say hi? Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, my friend. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so let's jump straight to the question we're about to cover. And the question is, some university students want to learn about other subjects in addition to the main subjects. Others believe that it's more important to give all of uh, their time and attention uh, to studying for a qualification. Discuss both views and give your opinion. I think it's the second uh, test of Cambridge 18. Uh, what do you think about this question? Well, it's like a, it, it's really difficult to decide which way to go because both of them make sense. Mm -hmm. So I think a valid argument can be made for both ways. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at uh, what I wrote and then mm -hmm. we talk about it a bit okay. more. So I, I think it's a nice from, idea yeah. to have a look at the structure of your writing because both of us, uh, we, we have different approaches to write uh, this one. Mm -hmm. So I highlight your introduction in blue, the first uh, body paragraph, you're going to discuss the first view and the second yep. body paragraph, I'm just going to highlight it in different color and the conclusion. However, we're going to see that I'm going to write uh, three body paragraphs. Okay, so yes. let's have a look at your introduction. All right, so um, you mentioned uh, the structure. Um, I have a tendency to write all five different types of writing tests too, with mm -hmm. four uh, mm -hmm. paragraphs, yeah. two body paragraphs for all, because I, I think it can address all the topics. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it's great to see your example as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I just want to highlight that when you write three body paragraph mm -hmm. paragraphs, some it, it has to be like shorter. You yeah, can't definitely. write this. And I do agree same. with okay. you that it's better to stick to one method. And yeah. some people are bombarded with too many methods, and as a result, they cannot uh, perform their best uh, performance in the exam. Okay, so let's have a look at your introduction. Could you please read it for us? Um, what I did is what I what I do all the time. I paraphrase the topic first, and then I gave my opinion. I said some students studying at universities wish to go beyond their curriculum and find out about other subjects, whereas others think that dedicating their entire time and attention to studying um, where is it yeah time and attention to studying for their qualification is more crucial it makes more sense should university students only focus on what they are supposed to study for their majors as shown here in this essay so I decided to go down this road mm -hmm. of just focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, you side with one view, and yeah, yeah, it's the most common way to write discussion type essays. Great, so I, I've highlighted some good phrases. You, you've paraphrased the question well, wish to go beyond their curriculum. Great, dedicating their entire time uh, and um, attention. Great, and uh, uh, you also uh, give us a very clear uh, position in the second uh, sentence and I like the way you use inversion so I'm just going to highlight it uh, it makes uh, it makes more sense should university students only focus so yeah I see a kind of less common use of inversion uh, great and you've used veras right. as a complex structure well done thank you thank you so much um, so I start with the uh, um, with the first body paragraph in here I discuss the idea that is not my opinion mm -hmm. so I try to use kind of a softer language mm -hmm. in here may might it can be Hedging. said that I use those elements yeah so I kind of distance myself mm -hmm. from this idea to indirectly tell the examiner hey this is not what I think mm -hmm. but I never say it directly mm -hmm. I start with a topic sentence learning about other subjects provides students with more knowledge regarding other branches of science and technology, making them more versatile in general. Um, the liberty to wander through a variety of subjects broadens their horizons and might give them a better idea about what 
research project they are inclined to pursue later in graduate school. For example, a medical student who finds physics appealing might be attracted to an interdisciplinary branch of medical engineering, which is tailored to his interests. Students can also simply enjoy learning about different subjects and quench their thirst for knowledge. They might have extensive general knowledge in the process and, for instance, uh, become aficionados of fine food and drinks. The freedom to acquire knowledge may even inspire them to study better for their qualification since they now have the incentives to do so. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, uh, um, I always believe that you should have a really clear structure, just like pieces of jigsaw puzzle, mm -hmm. one sits next to each other. You start with the topic sentence, you continue with the first supporting point, you expand, explain, I gave an example here. Then this one is a key. Students can also, this also is kind of, uh, you know, it's like, I think it's a very subtle way to, to move towards... Um, the next supporting point mm -hmm. um as yeah that's one of the things you always mention that it should be like kind of effortless mm -hmm. when you're moving so that exactly, at ease. Mean, exactly. Mm -hmm. so that's that's that if you have anything else to say okay uh, yeah um, i've highlighted uh, uh the range of vocabulary you've used provide a student with more knowledge versatile i like the way you paraphrase liberty so i'm just going to highlight it into freedom, you avoided repetition, we see flexibility in your writing. Uh, interdisciplinary branch, great, very to the point, it's uh, related to the topic we're talking about. And like always, I really enjoy the examples you make, I like them. And yeah, we see uh, 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 the, the cohesion between your sentences very well. And also, uh, so there is a clear central idea in this paragraph, and it's well developed. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, the next body paragraph is what I think. It is argued, on the other hand, that university students' complete time and undivided attention must be given to their qualifications, since the ultimate goal for every single one of them is to become an expert in their own field of study. That is indeed their sole purpose of being at the university. Their qualification is what builds their future. And by the time they graduate, they are expected, at least to some extent, to achieve mastery of their subject. Furthermore, one must admit that their youth, vigor, stamina, and freshness will not last forever. And students, must do whatever within their power to graduate with the best grades and even serve uh, an, an apprenticeship while still at university. Only then can they confidently present themselves as experts in their field and are capable of expressing expert opinions. So it's, it's really interesting that the word count mm. happened to be one but yeah. I didn't do it on purpose. It just mm -hmm. happened. It's a you nice clearly bonus. Discussed both both okay. You can show yeah, the and, and, and the last sentence, I used the word experts here intentionally. I used it twice to kind of, uh, you know, resonate what I want to say for the word expert. That's why I repeated it mm -hmm. twice. Okay. Um, what do you think about this? Thank you very much. I like the collocation undivided attention, very to the point. It uh, conveys the precise meaning. Well done. Ultimate goal has been paraphrased into sole purpose. Again, we see flexibility and uh, achieve mastery of their subject, vigor, stamina, and freshness. Great. So, uh, individual words might not be very interesting. What but when we combine them together in a paragraph or in an essay, they might show how good we are in the writing. So uh, I always encourage my students to focus on topic-related vocabulary, uh, collocations, and we see a great range in your paragraph. And like always, we see a good, uh, we see a clear central idea. And I like the way you use on the other hand. And we see enough linkages uh, um, uh, in, in your essay. Like, furthermore, we don't see any 
uh, under overuse of linkers that are used appropriately. Well done. Thank you, thank you. And of course, uh, the inversion in the end, yeah, only then I forgot to say, you yeah. use it at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's that's also an inversion. So you don't, they can only then, becomes only mm -hmm. then can they mm -hmm. confidently present themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, I just ended by um, paraphrasing what I already said throughout the essay. I say, in short, it seems that the best strategy for all university students is um, concentrating on their own subjects and avoiding all distractions. Otherwise, they are not likely to become real experts in their majors. Nothing fancy. I just paraphrase what I said. Yeah, but we don't need anything fancy. But again, you, you, you avoid repetition. You said avoiding all distraction, however you used, uh, dedicating uh, their entire time and attention. So we see uh, flexibility again. Well done. Great. And Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Great. So shall we move on to my writing? Yeah, but before we go there, I just want to mention um, one thing mm -hmm. to all the viewers uh, who were watching these podcasts. Um, there might be some occasional slips in mm -hmm. our essays, mm -hmm. in mine, because I rewatched the episodes. For example, in the last one, mm -hmm. I said uh, classical example, which is classic example. Mm -hmm. We don't say classical, mm -hmm. so that was a slip. Or I wrote energy resources, so I corrected it to energy sources. So there might be some occasional slips yeah. here and there. I really appreciate it if you or other viewers, other mm -hmm. colleagues, um, everyone who watches these podcasts, just tell us if they come up with something, yeah. and so we can. Great, yeah. We can and correct both it. of us are open to criticism. Think? Yeah, it will definitely help. Uh, all of us uh, make progress. Great. Uh, so let's move on to my writing. Uh, as I said, so let's have a, a quick look at my approach. So I'm not going to entirely side with one of the views. Uh, I, I'm just going to give another view. So if we see three body paragraphs in the first yeah. main paragraph, I talk about one view. In the second paragraph, I talk about the second view. And in the third main paragraph, I give my own view. Okay, so let's start with my introduction. <clears throat> it is sometimes said that students at university should be allowed to learn lessons not included in their major syllabus. However, others believe that all, all of students' time and attention should be dedicated to the relevant lessons of their major. In my opinion, giving the students... Uh, yeah, I should say giving the students, so that's one slip I can see. Okay, giving the students a limited number of optional course uh, credits seems to be the best option. Perfect, perfect. I like the way you paraphrase the first one, to learn lessons, learn lessons not included in their major syllabus. That, that's a good one here. Mm -hmm. right, you see that? Yeah. That's really good. And... um. Again, times and attention, that mm -hmm. one was also, you use dedication for time and attention, and it is passive. That's uh, one of the ways of writing complex structure. It, it doesn't have to be really complex. Just one passive structure mm -hmm. can be counted as complex grammar. Mm -hmm. right? oh. You talked about it, I think, a couple of days back on your, on your Instagram. Yeah. So I urge everyone to follow you on Instagram yeah. as well. Um, relevant lesson, perfect. And then your view, clearly at the end. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Limited number of options, which is the third way. That's mm, brilliant. Yeah. Another view. Okay, so on the one hand, studying lessons from other majors can sometimes provide university students with new insights. The fundamental concepts, formulas, and theories from different majors might be connected and interdependent. Interdisciplinary studies uh, show that other major subjects from different uh, majors can be used to do further research and find new ideas. By way of example, the rules of aerodynamics, uh, which are usually taught in mechanic engineering, can be used by an electrical engineer who wants to develop a flying robot. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Everything is to the point, fall in place, idea, the, the central idea proceeds really easily. But one thing is mechanic or mechanical engineering? I just uh, 
as far as I know, the major should be mechanic engineering, but mechanic I'm not, engineering. Yeah. All right, mechanic, yeah. yeah, like so economic or economics. Okay, exactly. But the rest is is absolutely perfect. Uh, the the central idea. I like to use the I like the use of the word insight uh -huh. instead of knowledge. Really, really good word here. Um, and you said studying lesson from other majors. And then you further developed by the use of concepts, formulas, and theories. Those the words that you said individually might not be that important, mm -hmm. but the combination is beautiful. And you said interdependent, and immediately after that you said interdisciplinary studies, which is a really nice and subtle way of mm -hmm. connecting ideas. That's beautiful. And also, uh, and finally, the example really follows in place. And as you realize, like the, the word count is probably mm -hmm. like 60, 70 words, yeah. like short, mm -hmm. because you still have two more to go. Yeah. Something that, you know, I think it's important. I, I never dare to write three paragraphs <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. seriously, it's not my cup of tea, man. I can't do it. Yeah. But it's really, really skillful. And you did it in time, right? You just give yourself 40 minutes uh, and you do it in time. Uh, I think we, uh, I wrote it in the class with some of my students. So I'm not sure whether I... I cared about the, the, the limit or not. Well, it's beautiful. Aerodynamics to flying robots mm -hmm. and, the, and the connection is just mm -hmm. beautiful. Very okay, good. thank you very much. So the second body paragraph uh, is going to talk about the second view. On the other hand, uh, uh, other lessons from uh, irrelevant majors can act as a distractor can act as distractors. It is said that gaining a deep understanding of a subject requires sufficient time and focus. So jumping to other courses can just give you superficial knowledge about other majors, which might not be enough to achieve practical outcomes. Instead, it's suggested to pr prioritize mastering the lessons of your own field and avoid the new materials which can disturb them. Wonderful, wonderful. You just... Uh presented the idea that is completely like 180 mm -hmm. degrees opposite by using the word can act as a distractor mm -hmm. so you're kind of refuting what you already said mm -hmm. above by the use of the word distractors mm -hmm. it is said is really nice way to continue again gaining a deep understanding i would say you might have used like a profound understanding. Mm -hmm. I think that might work as well. Yeah. Although deep is not bad at all, mm -hmm. but I would say like kind of further develop your lexical yeah. resource. It's the so less common deep, version of You deep. could have said profound on, yeah, but that's totally fine. Or you can say profound grasp, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, but mm -hmm. the same. Nevertheless, this one yeah. is really good. Uh, sufficient time and focus. Jumping to other courses, very beautiful use of the word jump, seemingly simple, but mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful, jumping. Again, superficial knowledge, the beautiful contrast with deep understanding, you see mm -hmm. that? This is really like a beautiful wordplay, like you put two things opposite. Mm -hmm. This one is beautiful. And it shows, again, a wide range of mm -hmm. vocabulary you have and you're capable of using them here. Practical outcome is a good one. Prioritize mastering the lesson. So instead of learning, you use the word mastering, which is beautiful. Avoid new materials can disturb them. Instead of distract, you can mm -hmm. use the word disturb. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Okay. So let's move Always on to learn my, you, my own friend. view. Always. Uh, having said that, I believe setting a specified number of course credits is the most logical decision. Students will be given a degree of flexibility to choose their favorite subjects in other fields to get familiar with new concepts and ideas. At the same time, the limited number of courses can oblige them to choose the optional lessons more wisely and prevent a lot of distraction uh, from their qualification. Well done. That's the third way, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think you, if you explain this one, that would be much better. How did you get to the third way and how do you present it after two paragraphs. It's interesting to hear it from you, I think. Uh, yes, because it was my, my real opinion. And uh, I thought uh, so. this uh, suggestion is the, is the most rational uh, solution. And so I try to present the valid arguments on both sides and then give a kind of combination of them. But as you said, it's risky. So there is a risk of giving unclear position and there is a risk of not justifying your points but right. mm, 
yeah, it's, uh, I rely on I this approach a as a kind. You did a, did a wonderful yeah. job. You started by having said yeah. that, which is kind of a complex grammar. Mm -hmm. It's a nice way to start. And you clearly say, I believe, mm -hmm. which is you know your position, setting a specified number of course credits. That's a beautiful uh, topic-related, less common collocation. Setting a specified number of course credits. Beautiful. Um, most logical decision instead of the best decision you said the most logical like at the first glance that you may say it's 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 no big deal but it is a big yeah. deal <laughs> you know if, <laughs> if you know what you're writing yeah everybody says the best decision but you say the most logical decision mm -hmm. well done and again you further um, cleared your position students will be given again another complex structure a structure sorry of future simple passive students will be given instead of we will give the students mm -hmm. see that that one yeah. is beautiful again degree of flexibility um i would say like to get familiar you could have written to become familiar mm -hmm. i kind of um you know walk on eggshells when talking about get in writing i use it but yeah what do you think yeah i think it would be a better alternative i agree yeah. with you but it, it's not wrong, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, limited number of courses can oblige them. Again, I we talked about this before. When your your whole essay is British, instead of obligated, you use British word oblige, which mm -hmm. is really nice. And more wisely, that one is also beautiful. Um, and it's interesting to draw people's attention that you use an adverb. Can you elaborate a little bit on? The use of adverbs and adjectives. Why didn't you say more wise or wiser? And you said more wisely. Why is that? Uh, because, again, it can show uh, a wider range of uh, vocabulary. So you using different parts of a speech can be considered uh, a higher degree of proficiency in vocabulary. So if I can, I just show I know different uh, parts of a speech of uh, one word. Exactly. And because you are describing a verb, choose, mm -hmm. I put it like that, to choose more wisely. Mm -hmm. So because the adverbs modify verbs, that's mm -hmm. why you did that. Mm -hmm. That's that's a very interesting thing. A lot of distractions. Distraction is like uh, another paraphrase of distractors mm -hmm. up there. You paraphrase it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. and your conclusion okay and in the final analysis learning from other majors uh, lessons and focusing on your own subjects both have their benefits therefore i think the best way to provide university students with uh, 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 the, the, the best way is to provide university students with a limited available courses in other subjects to gain the, the most benefits from those two suggestions wonderful wonderful um, again, you talked about both benefits, but um, like this benefit here um, is repeated again in, in down, down here. Um, was it an intentional or no, you could have just yeah. replaced it with uh, so another I, paraphrase? I, I didn't notice what that. What do you think? So we, we can just use a synonym for that. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. Oh, okay. Nevertheless, it's really, really beautiful. You just wrapped it up nice and clean and provide somebody with something again mm -hmm. uh, i would like to highlight to to the viewers that listen when you're using provide just um Esther Muhammad, uh, learning the word provide is not enough you should know how mm -hmm. to use it you should mm -hmm. learn a collocation and know how to use it in a sentence am i right yeah sure Great. Well done. Uh, thank you very much, well Mehdi. Hopefully, we are going to have the seventh episode focusing on the third test of the 18th Cambridge. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Please write down your suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Bye-bye.